Assalamu alaikum. I'm Dr. Masood Raja from University of North Texas. And first of all, I would like to thank Dr. Bushra Yasmin for inviting me to record this brief talk uh, for this conference and workshop. So I'll briefly be sharing my experience of working at a Research One University and looking at the institutional response to COVID-19 and then how we, the faculty, came together to deliver education. So we went online uh, in the spring, in April of 2020. And that is when uh, the pandemic had reached kind of a height and we were on spring break. So institutionally, what our institution, the University of North Texas, did was they extended the spring break one more week and requested us to shift our content completely online. Now, I know this sounds like a drastic shift, but of course, they were guided by the federal regulations and guidelines about safety of our students. But they, I would say as an institution, and I am a critic of large institutions, so coming from me, I think it is an admission that my university, I think, did a wonderful job of not only caring for the students' safety, but also giving us the tools to make the transition. And so immediately they made available to us different kinds of trainings, how to use Canvas, how to mobilize all the resources that the university provides to deliver that particular semester in a crisis situation. And we all did that using Canvas, using Zoom, and everything else that the university made available. Then we had plenty of time to plan for the fall semester, uh, uh, this fall semester, and the university was deeply engaged in us planning the whole semester. So first of all was the question of who will teach face-to-face -face and who will teach online. And the easiest way to decide that was that the university asked us, do you have a pre-existing condition that makes you prone to COVID-19? more than others. And those who had family members or they themselves had a pre-existing condition, all you had to do was fill a form and send it in. And the form didn't require you to prove anything. All you had to say was, I have a pre-existing condition and I would like to teach online. And that is all it took. No paperwork, no signatures, no authentication. Right? So, I was able to do that because I have a pre-existing condition, and that allowed my wife, who teaches, to also move online. And we had the entire summer to plan our courses and the resources of our institution, right? That is highly important because our institution stepped up, right, and gave us the resources and the guidance to design our courses and to deliver them. And this happened at the departmental level, at the level of the dean, at the level of the provost and everyone else. It wasn't an individual effort. Now, since we are a state-funded institution, since the Texas economy also went into a tailspin, there were budget cuts, right? And also the university had to take some extra burdens. So, for example, when the students left for their homes, you know, the university felt that they needed to refund them the remainder of the fees that they had paid for their dorm rooms, their meal plans, everything else, because they were no longer using those facilities. So university had to take that expense on and refund the students. And we were directed to cut our budget, I think, 2 to 3%, right? And the first thing on the table was that no department will be able to hire adjuncts, so we lost our adjunct funding. And then they wanted to give our lecturers one additional course, which would have raised their courses to five. Right? Upon that, let's say in our department, our chair sent us a request and said, would the tenure track faculty take one additional course? With the, that would enable us to 
not overburden our lecturers with one additional course since my load is a 2-2, two, two, so all I had to do was teach three courses instead of two. And plus, by taking on extra courses, what the tenured faculty did was they used the most highly paid faculty to deliver extra courses and convince the university administrators and the state that there was no need to lay off contingent workers, right, or workers who are not tenured. So we all took extra classes, extra load. Uh, uh, I actually volunteered to take on larger class sections. So instead of a section of 25, I took on 40 and 40, so I ended up with 80 students and then a graduate program. Now what I want to highlight here is that the institution made sure that its decisions were not arbitrary, that it didn't tell us to come up with online courses with our own resources, and that it provided the resources to the faculty to make that transition to online teaching. In terms of our students and their care, first of all, our library, university library, made sure that they, they have more than 400 laptops that students could borrow, right? those who are from poor families and couldn't have laptops, and tablets, they made that available. They extended the um, hot spots around campus so that the students, if they want to work, if they don't have good internet connection at home, they can come to campus, stay in a corner, and do that. And then they also made sure that our offices, and we have Office of Care, which takes, which intervenes any time a student is having a psychological or medical problem, and our Office of CLEAR, which guides us and helps us in instruction, that they were fully staffed and there for us to call, even during the summer vacations, so that we had all the resources that we needed to deliver this education online. So, not to suggest that we are exceptional and all, I would like to say that our administration, university administration, I think did an excellent job of consulting with the faculty and foregrounded the student's safety and care and still was able to manage, you know, quality education to their students. Now, on the side of like personal experiences, you know, we, we all are coping with it. We are being careful. Uh, but it is deeply isolating, especially in America where we don't have large families. So we all have made sure that we virtually stay in touch. We take care of each other. We have also internalized this idea that our students are not working under ideal conditions, and we are highly, highly sensitive to what's going on in their lives. So if a student says, you know, my, my mother got ill, we're not going to turn around and say, you must finish your assignment. No, we give them their time. And if we feel that they need additional help, we refer them to our care services and our counselors and all. So overall, I would say that the thing that impressed me the most was that from the office of our president down to the provost, the deans, and the chairs absolutely made it clear that even though it is crucial for us to continue teaching, because our university you know, relies on funding coming from the student fees, but also from the state, but they absolutely made clear that they were not going to do that at the cost of our health as faculty or at the cost of students' health. And I think they were able to, to really balance it really well. Another thing uh, that originally we had a bit of a problem with because the university was not being transparent about how many cases are there. But when the faculty objected to that, they made sure that the university website has a dashboard that tells us how many students have fallen ill, what are our numbers, so that we could constantly know what's going on on our campus. 
So overall, as a faculty member who is attuned to recording lectures and sharing them with the world and who thankfully, because of my interactions in Pakistan, have been doing online lectures, for me it wasn't really a hard transition. But I think for a lot of faculty who had not used these kind of modes of teaching, they had to make a hard transition, but I think our institution, by and large, did a really good job in enabling them to make that transition. Now, one other thing that is happening and has happened is that people's workload has increased. When you teach online, it takes more preparation, takes more time, and everyone is dealing with that. And the university is aware of that, actually. And we have told them that this is, especially for our contingent faculty and for our lecturers, this is uncompensated labor, which is not fair. But by and large, I would say that my institution, University of North Texas, is you know, handling it pretty well on the institutional level, but on the human-to-human -human level. And it has taught me one thing, and that is that we can't simply just rely on the, you know, work and sweat and labor of the workers. We can't just tell the teachers, go and do this, right? We have to have guidelines. We have to put resources in it. And then we have to make sure that our students get the kind of support that they need in these trying circumstances. And only a university that is geared towards that care of students and the faculty will do that. If you're about profit and about making money and about maintaining the hierarchies for an elite and not caring about the very people because of which there is the elite, uh, I don't think so the system would work so perfectly. Now, not every university in the United States has done it as efficiently as I would say our institution has. I have colleagues at other universities where people have had horrible experiences. But by and large, I would say that because of the federal law and the state laws that mandated that we deliver education, but also with an eye towards the safety of the faculty and the safety of the students, has enabled us to cope with this pandemic in a, by and large, in a really effective way. So these are some of the thoughts that I would, uh, I thought I should share. I have recorded videos uh, on these topics, on teaching under COVID, and I've developed a lot of teaching materials that you all can use if you are in the social sciences or in humanities, and they are available on my YouTube channel, which is called Postcolonialism. But I thought I should share these thoughts. Um, I wish I could answer your questions, but under the circumstances, I think this will have to do. Once again, Dr. Yasmin, thank you so much for inviting me to share my thoughts, and I wish all of you a wonderful workshop and a conference and a wonderful semester and I hope you all stay safe and your students are safe and your families are safe. Thank you so much. Both shukriya. Khuda Hafiz.